This week on CrossFeed. One is a minister, not a minister. Who's going to hell? One is discrimination, not your discrimination. Is it discrimination if you just hide it? Can you bring your Bible to school? Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hey, I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in Dedham, Massachusetts, just outside the beautiful city of Boston. So welcome, everybody. Um, hope you all had a great April Fool's Day. I was uh, I, I, I love April Fool's Day, uh, especially for all of the... Um, Okay, you can't go online and get your news that day because there's all sorts of, you know, joke articles and stuff like that. Um, my favorite site is thinkgeek.com, which has, uh, uh, at least on April Fool's Day, they, uh, have a bunch of fake products available. Um, like, uh, like, uh, Star Wars popsicles that, um, look like lightsabers and, and, and things like that. And some of the stuff is, People think it's such a great idea that they end up actually producing it. But uh, they had some pretty cool stuff. So, You know that letter that let you go to seminary? That that was actually a joke. You, you realize <laughs> that, don't you? <laughs> he, he didn't look at the actual date of that. Oh, well, now, now I figured it all out. Okay, that answers a lot of questions. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> oh, well, hey, or maybe you're kind of a sort of minister or something. So this comes out of Michigan, and there is the Hannah Tabor, Hosanna Tabor Evangelical Lutheran Church and School. I'd love to know how that name came about. Um, you know, a lot of times you see this. I've heard of the, uh, I'll bet it was like two groups that two churches that got together, like around here. In fact, tomorrow I'm going down to, um, in, in Lakewood, uh, Ohio is, uh, Pilgrim St. Paul or it's the Pilgrim St. Paul, uh, Lutheran Church. It was Pilgrim Lutheran Church and St. Paul Lutheran Church that merged. So. Yeah. So this, this is interesting. But anyway, yeah, um, the U.S. Supreme Court's going to hear this. The equal opportunity. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and Cyril Petrick versus Hosanna Tabor Evangelical Lutheran Church and School. Well, that's a long name for a court case, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. This is, by the way, an LCMS um, church. Church. So, right. And um, uh, 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 Cheryl P. P. Rick, I guess P. E. R. I. C. H. Um, was a commission a commissioned uh, minister of the LCMS. Therefore, when she was hired by the school, she was called as a minister of religion commissioned. Um, <clears throat> although religion only took one period of her day, still they are considered commissioned teachers by the oh, Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, a an auxiliary office of the pastoral ministry. Yeah, and this uh, is... You could actually be a, a commission minister and um, and and not teach any religion classes. Yes, or you can be a director of Christian education. You can be a deaconess. You can be a director of music. There's all a family life minister. There's all kinds of possibilities. Right. Anyway, um, <clears throat> something happened, and, and we don't know all the details, and we don't know the church's side of it, but uh, she was terminated in 2005 from her position. Uh, the school refused to reinstate her after a disability leave, although a doctor said she could restart, return to church work with no restrictions. Um, she filed suit claiming discrimination and retaliation under the American with Disabilities Act. Um, first court said, uh, no, nope, the school gets a ministerial ex exception to this uh, situation, dismissed the case. Uh, Sixth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, Cincinnati, said no, said uh, 
you know, it's uh, does not get an exception to this by unanimous opinion, no less. Which I think thought, thought was interesting. They appealed to the uh, Supreme Court, which, t- to my great shock, uh, accepted this case. Generally, they want conflicting cases or something out there, um, and, but they they took it. Um, and um, so the, the appeals court said, look, uh, you know, she, 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 her religion was not primarily uh, religious or her, her function. Uh, you don't have to be Lutheran to teach at the school. You don't have to be, um, uh, 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 you know, and you're not required to. And uh, at least one teacher there is not Lutheran. So she should be hired as any, taking care of any other employee. Um, oh, by the way, th- this article doesn't say it, but when I was doing a little digging around, um, her condition is narcolepsy. So she can um, sort of randomly fall asleep unexpectedly. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. Okay. I mean, there's, there's so many things here, so many threats. But if condition is narcolepsy. If she can randomly fall asleep, I don't think I want that person in a classroom, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would make me nervous. I mean, and here's the thing. That would make me, as a parent, nervous. Um, Yeah, that's something. As as a parent, it would make me extremely nervous. You know, and and the doctor um, said it's okay for her to return to work. At the same time, I'm thinking that a condition like that is going to be very detrimental to the school because, you know, parents for private school parents are, are paying to send their kids there. All right. Uh, if teachers in a wheelchair or, you know, has some other sort of disability that, um, where they're still able to, to manage the classroom. Well, she's mostly able to manage the classroom, but if she all of a sudden falls asleep, and, you know, then there's nobody monitoring the kids. Right. I mean, this, this, yeah. And, uh, and you're exactly right. This is, this is a private school. Parents pay tuition. If I have a teacher there that I know, if my kids are in a classroom and I know this teacher randomly falls asleep because of a disease, I'm not going to pay the money. Right. No, I, you know, I'm sympathetic. Right. Um, and um, so I, I just think, you know, so that, that's, I mean, that's one part. OK, I mean, you know, can the ADA take care of, you know, every situation um, within our church body? One of the reasons you can be dismissed from call is that you're unable to fulfill the duties of the call. Um, who gets to make that decision? Well, the congregation does. I knew one pastor who was you know, <laughs> Very incapacitated. He could not do it and refused to resign or refused to retire. He's actually enough to retire at the time. Um, just refused. I have a call. And the congregation had to, had to remove him from his call for inability to carry out the job, the, the duties of his office. I think, you know, if you're, you have narcolepsy, then you can be argued that, yes, you are incapable of doing the job, of doing the, doing, carrying out the deeds of your work of your office. Mm hmm. Right. No, I mean, it's a tough call because, like, how significant, how extreme is the narcolepsy? You know, is this something that only happens when she's already drowsy or is there medication that, you know, can properly mm-hmm. regulate it or, you know, yeah, and I don't, I, you know, I don't know narcolepsy. OK, I'm not a physician of any kind. Right. And um, I mean, it is interesting. The doctor, you know, saw, saw the whole thing, says she can return to work. With no conditions, mm-hmm. um, I guess my next question is: Are you going to enroll your kid in her classroom? Right. So you know it's going to be very damaging to the school. But now the bigger issue is this whole question of the ministerial exception. All right, because here's the thing: you know, I was thinking about this. What is the you know a commission minister? This is sort of a term that that we use in the Missouri Synod. I'm not sure. In fact, that's when I saw that. That's what made me check to see what kind of Lutheran this was. Um, because I'm not the sure. The ELCA should be called an associate ministry. Yeah, see, 
And so I, th- I think that that's a pretty, I saw that term and, and, you know, so the light went on and, and so I, I looked up the congregation and sure enough, it's Missouri Synod. And, uh, in fact, I, I thought of that even before I saw that it was a Lutheran. Um, and, um, you know, we've run into problems before with the government not understanding our, our polity, our, our, our structure and, and, and the way that we're set up as a church. Um, because we're also synodical, which is not something that, that, um, most churches are either hierarchical or congregational. It's sort of your power structure and we're sort of halfway in between. And, um, and, and so it was, you know, we've, we've run into problems with that before with people not being able to properly categorize us. And, um, you know, the, this really just from the, what I'm seeing here, it shows a real, misunderstanding of what it means to be a commissioned minister. And, and the best... Well, go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. All right. I was thinking the best metaphor that I can think of is, all right, imagine that in, instead of a, a commissioned Lutheran minister, she's a nun, okay? And she's called on to, to teach at this school, okay? And, and she's teaching math classes, but she's a nun and she's teaching at a Catholic school, all right? Nobody's going to argue that she is not, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, that this is not a person who's set aside for a specific, um, for a religious role. Okay. Even though she's, t- she'd be teaching math classes. All right. She's an un. Well, a commissioned teacher in the LCMS is like that. Right. Except they can get married. <laughs> right. Yeah. Very much. That, that's a very good analogy, I think. Um, well, I, and they're just taking it by the function. Forty-five minutes of her class is spent teaching religion of her class day. Therefore, she's not um, a minister in any sense, uh, of any sense. Well, you're not really going to make that judgment. And second of all, um, you know, um, <clears throat> the teachers are not required to be called or even Lutheran. Well, if you are a member of the LCMS, you must be called. That is what our that is what our guidelines say. If you are LCMS and you are no, if you're LCMS and you have gone through our system and you are eligible for a call, you must be called. So you know, you, so so that's that's there there the, the courts even make a mistake. Uh, yes, there may be non LCMS teachers, uh, 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 non no, there may be non commissioned ministers who may not even be Lutheran at the school. However, they are at will employees. Yeah, they're hired. They're not called. Right, they're hired. They're not called. There are more protections with if you have a call. One of the questions I would um, really encourage the uh, uh, the congregation's lawyer to have, to to go after is why didn't we have a system in our church body uh, to deal with uh, judicial system to deal with people who feel they were. Uh, uh, dismissed from call unfairly. She should have gone through the ecclesiastical system rather than the uh, EEOC. Yeah. Yeah, because this is that whole where Jesus talks about not taking your um, complaints against the church um, to the public square. Mm-hmm. And this stuff should be handled internally. Right. She should have you know, said, uh, you know, I'm going chapter 8 in the handbook. Uh, you know, that's, that's our reconciliation chapter. Um, I'm very familiar with it because I'm the person who administers that in our district. And, uh, can't say it's always take, you know, worked out perfectly, but it is an ecclesiastical way of dealing with it. So, it's, it's an interesting situation. Um. Either way, it's going to be bad uh, for the school. Yeah, either way. Although, uh, one person on one list, when I, I noticed him talking about this, um, he's not uh, LCMS. I think he's ELS or Wisconsin Synod. Actually sent his kids to that school when he lived in Michigan. He says it's a very good school. He was very, he was very happy with it overall. So, um, but, uh, well, let's go on the flip side. How about if you're a student bringing your Bible to, um, to, to, to school? Um, this is out in where? What state? Country state is this? <laughs> it says East County. Um, all right, San Diego. No. Yeah, okay. San Diego area. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they 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 say he's uh, 
Yeah, it's out there because they even say something about it being very uh, uh, Christian conservative area um, for the uh, uh, um, for the thing. Uh, yeah, but it's in San Diego is where uh, the the court case has been filed. Um, okay, this is a uh, uh, kind of an interesting situation. There's a um, kid whose name's Kenneth Dominguez. And he's 16, and he goes to an alternative high school. Now, it's uh, called Gateway East Community Day School, and it's for students who have been expelled from their traditional campus, are on probation, or have been habitual truants. So this is a... Uh, so that tells you a little bit about the kid right there, the fact that he's, that, that he, you know, at, at all, this alternative high school. And it's an El Cajon uh, has 34 students, two teachers, two classrooms. And this guy, um, uh, you know, now, now he says he just liked to, um, talk about religion and carry his Bible. And, you know, that he was sharing his faith and that's okay. Um, and they told him to stop. And, um, the, Discipline thing says student was told to stop preaching at school. Student continued after being warned several times. Student will not bring Bible to school. Um, <clears throat> and the um, Sacramento-based Pacific Justice Institute, which specializes in religious freedom cases, is representing this guy. And they say this is something we would have heard happening in the Soviet Union or Mao Zedong's China 40 years ago. The fact that it's happening in the United States and a school district refused to admit any wrongdoing is deplorable. The ACLU says, well, if the facts are the way he claims them, it's a ser- serious free speech violation. They, on the, the school district says, he uh, was very disruptive. He interrupted class, um, and they told him, you know, knock it off. And they said they never prohibited him from bringing his Bible to the school. It has nothing to do with his religious viewpoints. Um, uh, the disconnect appears to be whether or not the school ensures learning occurs in a non-disruptive environment. And there's a lot of disruptive behavior. So we've got um, a guy by the name of Mike McConnell, director of Stanford University's Constitutional Law Center. Um, he said the case sounds like a factual dispute. Uh, he says, uh, however, I don't see the legitimate ba- what legitimate basis there could be for not letting him bring this Bible. All right. So here's the deal. This is sort of a he said, she said sort of situation. Um, that he's, all right, this, this kid and, and his, his lawyers are saying, um, oh, well, they told me I couldn't bring my Bible to school and, and, uh, and I was, I was just practicing free speech and, um, and the school saying, no, you were disrupting class. All right. Now, Really, I'm I'm seeing so far. I'm seeing one contradiction because they say that um, he was never prohibited from bringing his Bible to school, and yet they have a suspension document that says student will not bring Bible to school. Right. Okay. Now here's an interesting thing. As I got to thinking about that, it, it does not say student was told not to bring Bible to school. It does not say that. It says student will not. So it could be, and I'd have to read the whole documentation, okay? I'm, I'm just trying to say what it, what it sounds like it could be, is simply we're sitting down talking to uh, Kenneth and say, Kenneth, look, you're being disruptive. How are we going to handle this? Yeah, what are, what are things that, you know, we can be doing, you know, to you know, do this? And that he agreed, you know, well, maybe, you know, I won't bring, you know, you know could, you, could you leave your Bible at home? You know, well, yeah, I guess I could do that. Okay. You know, that student be. student will not bring Bible to school. Doesn't doesn't you know that this was something that they had talked about and he'd agreed to? You know, doesn't say you know student was told or warned not to. I mean, you know, because um, I mean, uh, alternative high schools, I mean, can be very interesting places. Mm-hmm. Some of them you get some students there who have. Um, you know, various mental illnesses and disabilities and things like that. And uh, if you get a student who's being very disruptive, 
it can get the whole place riled up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to do that. I'm not. Re- I really need to look up that teacher and apologize to her someday. Um, but, but I had. Dale to, went to an alternative high school. No, okay, no, we learn new things about him all the time. <laughs> no, no, but uh, there was there was one particular English class that um, had a teacher that was it was just really easy to push her buttons, and uh, and and I was I was pretty obnoxious, and uh, and and so the teacher would. If there was like some flaw in what the teacher said, however small, I would take great joy in pointing that out and, and, and debating. And if there was some logical inconsistency, that was just, for me, it was like challenge accepted. And, uh, and it, and it got to the point where like we had a quiz and some people would come to me before class and go, Hey, I didn't study for the quiz. Could you like, you know, have an argument with the teacher so that we can get out of it? And it, to the point that I could actually make something up and, um, and, and successfully argue with, with my teacher, um, and, and it ended up wasting enough class time to have to postpone the quiz. Um, I was, you know, this is sort of juvenile and, and, you know, the teacher really should have said, look, you're disrupting class. You do it again. You're in the office. And that would have stopped me real quick. But, you know, she just, didn't for whatever reason didn't and uh and let's set continue. the word he he was pretty obnoxious i'm trying to figure out when the was <laughs> came to effect anyway um um just moving on here um yeah you know this is something where yeah there's a factual question whether or not he was told he couldn't bring it uh, because they said look we have absolutely no problem with him having it but you know he, he's being disruptive, and I'm sure they've got documentation of the wazoo as to how he's been disruptive. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, that's that's the one thing they do. Is, I mean, you're not going to be an alternative high school like that if you don't already get in cause trouble where you were, apparently. So, right. Yeah. Now, uh, they so, must have documentation of the wazoo on this kid. Now, the, the other thing, though, is there are situations where something like this happened. In fact, it also happened not to me directly but indirectly I, I i'm pretty sure i've mentioned this at some point on the show but uh, it's been a while um when i was a vicar up in green bay i was teaching fifth and sixth grade confirmation class and um and we were talking about ways to share your faith with um you know and with your fellow students and things like that and um and and i said you know just bringing your bible to school with you and um you know and and taking it out during study hall or something like that when your homework's done and sit and reading that instead of something else, you know, it would just be a very simple way to express to people um, what you believe or, you know, or just carrying it around with you, you know? And, um, and the kids said, Oh, we can't do that. I said, what do you mean? They said, we're not allowed to bring Bibles to school. I said, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, our assistant principal told us that, um, that if we take a Bible to school, we'll be, we'll get a detention. All right. I'm, you know, not really sure what's going on here, but you guys have the constitutional right to bring your Bible to school with you. I, I'm like, don't be obnoxious with it or anything, but, um, but you can carry it with you and, you know, you can take it with you and, um, and you have the right to do that. And, uh, like, no, we'll, we'll get a detention. I said, look, if you get a detention for bringing your Bible to school and, and the, cause they're afraid they'd miss the bus then I said, you call me, I'll pick you up and take you home. All right. Um, and, uh, now being an experienced vicar, what I should have said is, and make sure you talk to your parents about this. All right. So the next day I get a phone call. What did you tell my kids? <laughs> what? As they were le- heading out the door to get on the bus this morning, they said, bye mom, by the way, I might not be on the bus on the way home. <laughs> and, and it, you know, they took it as challenge accepted. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and the parent was, was going, um, 
okay, sharing your faith is one thing, but these kids aren't seeing it as an opportunity to share their faith. They're seeing it as an opportunity to buck the system. <laughs> and, but then I got another phone call like an hour later from a parent saying, thank you so much. Cause her kid actually did talk to her about it. And she's, I went down to the school and I talked to the assistant principal and it was in fact true that the children were told this. And I told him in no uncertain terms that he does not have the right to tell them that and that they absolutely have the right to bring their Bibles to school with them. And he apologized and that will not be an issue anymore. They are allowed to bring their Bibles whenever they want. And so it all, it all sort of worked out in the end, but, uh, it was also a good learning thing for me that, okay, always make sure you tell them to talk to their parents about it first. <laughs> so, so it, you know, it could happen and, and it does, uh, sometimes happen. Um, so, but yeah, I think that this is, it's right that this is a factual dispute. It's just a matter of getting all the facts out. Um, and, and I think that, you know, the truth will be very obvious of exactly what's going on here. So it's just a matter of the documentation. So. Yep. So it's, uh, but yeah, I'd like to know a little bit more. Yeah. I, I, I know some teachers, some principals, but I mean, on the other hand, I mean, they, they make a pretty unequivocal, unequivocal statement. Um, you know, this, this, this has nothing to do with his religious viewpoint. There's absolute respect by the board, the superintendent, the principal, and the teacher for the freedom of religion that is guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. Um, even somewhere here, and I can't remember where the com comment is, it said something about the fact, oh, the case which is um, attracting uh, attention in the Christian community is taking place in a district that is run by a board dominated by Lutheran conservatives, or religious conservatives. So, you know... I think there might be something more to this than... Yeah, it seems uh, unlikely. It, it, Unless it's okay. just... It could be just one rogue faculty member that doesn't realize... Like, the, in the case of that assistant principal, he wasn't speaking... You know, it, this wasn't the school board. This was just this one assistant principal. That right. just but needed to be the, straightened out. So. But there's only two faculty, so you can... <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah, true. No, I, <laughs> Yeah, since the school is the size of a Seven Eleven, so yeah, yeah, there's only thirty four kids, you know. So it's you know it's it's a, must be an interesting place. Okay, well let 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 let's go from the school to the workplace. Okay, All right. So this is in Washington. Um, I'm assuming that means Washington D.C. And uh, a coalition of religious and civil liberty groups is pushing the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to stop employers from segregating visibly religious employees from customers and the general public. So basically what you have going on here is, is businesses that are uh, – what the accusation is that they are saying, oh, this person is Muslim, there's a woman that wears a headscarf, um, a Sikh man that wears the uh, um, you know, uh, beard and the turban and that. Um, you know, people that, that you, you see them on the road, you see them out in the, in the public, and you immediately know what their religion is just by the way they're dressed. Right? And what's happening is these people are being – they're, they're hiring them, but they're putting them in the back room or something like that where they won't be seen. Kind, kind of like, uh, you know, people wearing Packers ties in, you know, Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just great. A friend of mine was telling me about a court case about this where a guy was fired from uh, his uh, work, uh, his car dealer selling cars because he wore a Packers tie and it's in Chicago area. And, so he I can see him not selling many cars <laughs> I, it was in northern Chicago you know or a little bit more on the line and actually apparently he was quite good apparently he was a very good salesman um, and he got on the news and before the day was over he had 10, 10 other places calling him and worked out <laughs> um, yeah so I I don't know I, I, I mean I, 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 it doesn't bother me. I mean, I've, you know, gone to the post office with a Muslim woman, had her headscarf, you know. Hi, how you doing? Right, right. You know. Okay, but yeah, I mean, you know, so is this discrimination? I would say, yeah, it is. I mean, if that's what they're doing, if if this is, mm -hmm. you know, deliberate, 
and they, and they can demonstrate um, credibly that that this kind of practice is going on. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd have a problem with that. Um, you know, it's it's one thing if there's a um, and now you, you get into the whole um, sort of dress code. You know, that's that's a whole other right. issue. They're not breaking any sort of dress code here. Right. Um, well, uh, you know, most they, dress codes they, allow for religious things when it's required yeah. by the religion anyway. I wish there was more details about this because it says uh, the organizations are concerned that adherence to religious dress can cause segregation. Citing examples of a Muslim woman in a headscarf or a Sikh man in a turban, where courts ruled for the employees who segregate employers who segregated those employees for their entire. Well, okay, so you know, it says it can cause, and that's you know. So now we're we're we're, we're just putting out there on a possibility. Um, so there are some court cases. Well, what happened in those court cases? What caused the court to rule against the religious? Attire. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, was it a customer service thing that they, you know, thought to people? Or was it a um, safety thing in a workplace? And you're going to have to be in a different job if you're going to wear that. Right. Yeah, because there's some machinery or something like that or, you know, right. some to that effect. Yeah. I mean, you know, if, if it's uh, um, one of Lou Farrakhan's people and that's, you know, has something about the white devils, you know, then I could see, say, okay, yeah, if you really have to wear a shirt like that, you're going in back. Right. You know, and, you know, it says, you know, that they want the, e, they want the EEOC to enhance training on the guidelines for inappropriate segregation already in place, make enforcement a priority and clarify that it is never appropriate to separate religious employees from customers to save a corporate image, the letter said. Well, okay, that's all true. However, if you take, if you feel this is happening, you take it to court and you lose in the court, then there's, the court is saying there is no discrimination taking place. EEOC has no, nothing to, that they can enforce. Right. I mean, that's, 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 that's who makes the final determination of guilt or innocence. It's in the court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this is, if it's happening, yeah, it needs to stop. That is discrimination. All right. It's, you're, you're still, it's a sort of separate but equal sort of job. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, on the other hand, if you're, um, if, if it's for other reasons for safety, you know, I mean, you, there's certain jobs where if people really feel compelled mm-hmm. to, to wear a, a cross necklace or, or something like that. Um, you know what? If you're working around machinery where you're not allowed to wear jewelry, Guess what? That's not going to happen if you're uh, right. part of a group. But that, if you're, and, but if you're in an office and they say you can't wear that, that, that that's discrimination. Right. Yeah. If you're, you know, working the, if you, you know, say you're working, use example of McDonald's, um, where um, you have, oh well, we're going to make you work back in the grill area instead of, you know, we don't want you up at uh, working the counter, mm. you know. Uh, well, if if that's a a consistent, you know, if that kind of stuff's going on, well, that that's a problem. Yep. I wonder if the seat guy's got those cool knives with him. Maybe that's what's making him nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they're not sharp though, so it wouldn't really do him any good in the grill area. So. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, may, maybe they're just all going to hell. You know, let's just take care of it that way. <laughs> or is there a hell? What is hell? Um, okay. I'd like to read the book now. I'm, I'm just, you know, you know, I'm kind of interested in reading. Yeah, and and we need to preface this that neither one of us have read this book. Okay, but then again, most of the people speaking out about it haven't. <laughs> That's it's true. Um, so, so know, please uh, sort of t- take that into account as we discuss this, and we'll try to just sort of talk in general terms about various teachings and not, you know, specifically about the book itself, per se. Right. Uh, well, Rob Bell, who is the pastor of Mars Hill Church out, up in Michigan, where they have about 10,000 a Sunday, has written a book. Mars Hill Bible Church. Uh, Mars Hill because, Bible Church. Because Mars Hill Church is Mark Driscoll's church in, was it Seattle? Seattle. 
which is totally yeah. different. In fact, Mark Driscoll has been speaking out rather vehemently against this book. Uh, Rob, isn't Rob Bell one of the emerging church guys? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, big difference. And and the and the reason I point that out is because I didn't know there were two different Mars Hill major huge Mars Hill churches. All right. Um, so I heard Mars Hill church, and, and in fact, it was because of this book that I found out. I was reading an article about Mark Driscoll at, from you know, attacking this pastor from Mars Hill Bible Church. And I went, um, isn't that the same church? And then I looked it up and went, oh, there's two different ones. And and in fact, um, I had one of my members uh, sent me an email right around, like right after that, who pointed out to me the difference that he'd said, you know, I, I just want to mention to you that you misspoke on this at one point um, where you got those two churches confused. And I was like, yeah, I just figured that out, but. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I didn't notice that until you just mentioned it. Thank you for for pointing that out because I was kind of confused too. I'm going like, that's the guy at Mars Hill was was was, was pretty strong. Um. Anyway, apparently in this book he's got some. I, I get. I don't know what he says in it. That's the thing is because he denies that he's universalist. Okay, so here's. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day um, who is a little bit more, I don't think he's read it either, but he, he's a little more familiar with, he's read more about it. Um, and it sounds like, and, and, and if somebody's read the book, please correct us. We'd love your feedback. Crossfeed at, or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, podcast at crossfeednews.com. Um, all right. But, but what I gather from it is that he's saying that possibly after, if somebody dies without faith in Jesus, that maybe God could come up with another way for that person to be saved or that he could give them faith and then take them, you know, sort of apart f that, that there's some other way to be saved. Um, or, or, or at least, and, and the thing is I ran into this sort of idea back when I was in Iowa talking to some of the, um, other mainline pastors, um, in Iowa, a Methodist guy, I believe it was, or UCC. Um, he was at a church that was half Methodist, half UCC, so I'm not sure which one he was. Um, but uh, it was, you know, he he talked about sort of alternate ways of salvation or something like that. And he said, um, Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but by me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And, and he said, yeah. No one comes to the Father but by what Jesus has done for us. And he pointed out that that passage does not specifically mention faith. All right. But, I mean, collectively, the Bible makes a pretty clear connection between faith and salvation. You know, by grace are you saved through faith. You know, I pointed that out. And he, he, says, he says, yeah, you are. Other people may be saved by grace through other things. There's no indication of that from the Bible, all right? But that's kind of the idea. That's the, the sort of prevailing idea among certain uh, sort of more liberal theologians um, that that they're saying, you know, maybe there's another way. Okay. I, I think, the you know, no. Scripture's kind of clear. You have your choice. I mean, you can't even figure out what you're doing here on earth now. And when you die... It's, 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 what was going on then? End of story. You know? I mean, you know, and, and, and they have a lot of people here, you know, going, uh, 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 one person says, I, I don't like the idea of hell. Um, God loves us. And I don't see how a loving God could send people to hell. Um, well, no, it's, you know, as I often say, um, uh, you know, I, I, God doesn't. I honestly believe with all of my heart, God does not send anyone to hell. We decide, we do. Keep telling God my whole life. Don't want anything to do with you. Don't want anything to do with you. Don't want anything to do with you. I'm going to do it my own way. Don't need you. I'm going to do it my way. And when we die, God says, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. How's that working out for you? You know, yeah. Yeah. you know. Now you know what that means. 
because uh, I had one of my kids, and it's really funny. It's kind of a neat question she asked. She says, because uh, we talked about the fall, and she says, and, 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 and I told them, you know, well, you know, first question, cause, well, why why do we have, uh, you know, why did God put the tree there? And I said, well, God didn't want little robots. He wanted people to freely obey him. And, 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 and to, to, to obey him and, and, and to do so freely. So then she said, well, in heaven, is there going to be another tree? You know, and it's really not talking heaven, but when Jesus returns. I said, no, there's not. We're, we're going to obey God forever and live with him. Said, but you just said God didn't want robots. Aren't we going to be robots then? And man, I stumped. How am I going to answer this question? And I, 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 I said, you know what it is? Do you want to serve, do you want to love Jesus now? Yeah. Do you want to serve him now? Yeah. You already made the choice. And when you die, God's going to go, okay, it's what you wanted. Now you're going to know what really is to serve me and, and, to, and to live with me forever. You had a glimpse of it earlier. Now you get right. And you don't, and, and, and I said, do you like sinning? No. I said, do you really make you happy when you disobey God or get in an argument with your parents? No. Uh-uh. God says, fine. The stuff you never wanted in your life, it's gone. And it's going to stay gone. Yeah. She liked that answer. You know, that answer made a lot of sense to her. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, that's the reality is, you know, it's just, you know, we're, we're just, it's the stuff that happened to us in our life on this earth. I think it's just then comes to the fulfillment of what that really means. You know, I, as I was reading through the different quotes in this article, um, the, the sort of prevailing thing that I found was this idea, well, you know, so people go, well, hell is for, like, really bad people, you know, or, or, well, you know, how could a good God send people to hell, and, 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 all, and, and here's the thing, when I was in high school, I kind of believed that, you know, I, I believed that salvation because of, of Jesus, salvation through faith, you don't have to do anything to earn it, but I also believe that, you know, I thought, well, but what if I had sort of a Roman Catholic anonymous Christian sort of um, sort of belief that, well, but if a person lives a really good life, you know, then they could probably, you know, then they should still be able to go to heaven. But so the problem was is, is I understood the gospel, but I didn't understand the law. That because here's the thing, and this is what these people aren't understanding is that God is love. God is also justice. Right, he is a righteous and holy God, and 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 I use the example with kids. All right, so, it, um, if you're out in the mud, all right, and your mom just mopped the floor, all right, are you gonna? Is she gonna let you just go tromping through and drag all that mud across her floor? They're like, no, you have to take your shoes off, right? Yeah, all right. So, if why is that? Because she doesn't want all that mud dragged into her perfectly clean floor, yeah. all right? God's heaven, God's new creation is perfectly clean, is completely free from sin, right? So why would God want all of that, um, all of that sin dragged into heaven and, and mess it all up? Well, guess what? Jesus freed us from sin so that we can go to heaven and, and go to God's new creation without, without messing it up, right? But if you're still holding on to your sin and saying, no, I'm going to do things my way, then you've still got all that sin. And, and if you're going to hold on to that, you can't get in with it. Right. I like the way uh, Max Lucado put it in one of his things. He's, he uses the thing of a checkbook. And, that you, you know, uh, uh, our checks are overdrawn checks on heaven. Yeah, you know, we're, we're putting, the, you know, we're paying the stuff that we can't pay. And as he talks about how a banker says, a banker has to have a penalty. Uh, because if there's no penalty for all bouncing checks, if the bank just pays them anyway, then you're just going to keep on writing bad checks. And not only are you going to do it, but everybody else is going to do it. And the integrity of the bank is going to be shot because if they're going to you know, be paying out all the money and not getting anything in. Same way with God. If God doesn't deal with sin, his very integrity is at stake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because God is no longer holy then. Right. Right. We, you know, we want God to be, you know, our buddy. And um, 
but he's also the holy and righteous God. Right. And, and, and we can't forget that attribute. And and do you want a God that that is not that doesn't care about sin? You know, if cause here's the thing: if he doesn't care about sin, then why the heck did Jesus die on the cross? That's right. I often tell my people, if you want to see how seriously God takes sin, look at the price that he paid for. Yep. So that must that should be the clue. Mm-hmm. And uh, ripping me off again, man. I tell you, <laughs> keep it up, buddy. Uh, and uh, 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 but you know, there, there's a. Um, I, I like this one guy though. <laughs> For him, hell is a place where if you don't accept Jesus, or if you reject Jesus, it's a place of torment. Hell's also for those who are ruthless and brutally hurt people. <laughs> right. That's kind of where I was at, you know. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, oh yeah, I hate these people too. Um, you know. Uh, uh, um. And the other reality is, um, is uh, I think one of the books that we're, you and I are reading in TCN, the guy says, you know, if there is no hell, then why, why are we preaching Jesus? You know, yeah. but if we really believe in it, then that's got to push us all the more to share Jesus. Because, you know, we can't live if God's going to let our neighborhood get get away, you know, not worry about it. Right. You know, or our friends, you know, that should be a motivation for us to say, I need to share the gospel with you. Mm-hmm. Because that's what it's all about. Right. Yeah. So, I mean... <sighs> On the one hand, we don't want there to be a hell because then we're off the hook. And right. you know, and, and, and we don't and, and we don't like the thought of of our friends, neighbors, in some cases family members, um that that that's a a likely destination for them. Right? Um that does not sit well, and I'll bet you everybody that's listening or watching can think of somebody in their life, and and, and nowadays, quite commonly, probably a family member, maybe a, a sibling, a, a parent, grandparent, child, all right? And, oh, I mean, I've got people in my family, and it just tears me apart, and I pray for them every day, all right? But I pray for them because I'm concerned about them. Now, it's also though it's it's also important to understand that um, the Jesus is and, and and faith is not just about heaven and hell, all right. Because those same people, I want them to know Jesus not just on their deathbed. I want them to know him now because he loves them now. So, but it, it, it's hard. It. it you know, it's it's a hard topic, um, but it is the truth, and and you can't skirt around it. So, on a completely unrelated um, note, yeah, uh, <laughs> um, this is actually kind of cool. I've been excited about this. I've been talking about this a lot uh, because it, it fascinates me. All right, uh, jumping over to Arizona. Uh, Arizona's been kind of um, controversial in their laws um, over the past year or so, and uh, and this one is definitely a controversial law, um, but it's different from anything that I've seen before. All right, um, this is a, a bill that has now been signed into law that makes the state the first in the nation to outlaw abortions performed on the basis of the race or gender of the fetus. Maybe the human race deserves to be wiped out. Um, Doctors and other medical professionals would face felony charges if if they could be shown to have performed abortions for the purpose of helping parents select their offspring on the basis of gender or race. Now, it needs to be clarified that... um, there's no explicit provision requiring doctors to ask their patients their reasons for seeking an abortion, nor for patients to disclose such reasons, but opponents of the measure feel the passage of the new law might make them feel more inclined to do so. All right. Except I don't think so. I, I think that um, 
that if, you know, say they go into a Planned Parenthood or something like that and, um, all right, to get an abortion. All right. So they go in there and, and they have to fill out a, a, you know, a form or something like that. And then you put right on the form, you, you have a little checkbox that says, um, I am, I, my reason for wanting this abortion is not the race or gender of the child. Okay. I need you to check that box. Okay. You know, okay, that's it. And, and then that, um, that, uh, takes care of the doctor being, uh, penalized or, or anything like that. So, all right. So it seems like kind of a, a goofy thing. But here's the thing. If you say that you cannot discriminate against that unborn child because of their race or gender, then why is it okay to discriminate against them based on their age? Are you ready for the children? Whoa, whoa, whoa. The future is coming. Hey, hey, hey. So, because what this is, this is a step toward <coughs> defining um, that unborn child as a person. If you can't discriminate against them, you can only discriminate against a person. And so, if you can't discriminate against them, then they're a person. Now, and and the other thing about this is, while Planned Parenthood. Um, talks about eroding a woman's rights, fearing that doctors for the first time would feel compelled to ask their patients the reasons for seeking an abortion. Um, and that they're also saying that there's no clear evidence found that this is actually happening in Arizona. So it's a unnecessary law. Okay. But here's the thing. If you want to really lobby against this law, then what do you have to do? You have to say that it's okay for people to have abortions because of um, the race or gender of the child, right? You just lost the support of all of your minority groups and all of your um, all of your uh, feminist groups, and you don't want to lose the support of your feminist groups when you're talking about abortion issues. I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. Oh yeah, that's what, no, we're, we as a feminist organization, we're okay with the idea of killing them just because they're girls. <laughs> you know, they're not going to take that stand. So, I, I think this is brilliant. Hey, God, my brilliant. Well, you know, I don't know, uh, um, I don't know who's, who who would do. The abortion on basis of the race. I mean, that's that's what I'm not sure. Oh, of, okay? oh, I can I think of a perfect example. Okay, right? a woman is white. She's married to a white man. She has an affair with a black man. She gets pregnant. She doesn't want her husband to find out about the affair. If it was a white man that she was having an affair with, if he looked enough like or you know had certain characteristics that so that when the baby's born she could claim that it was her husband's baby. Okay, possibly. I mean. The, the 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 gender. I mean, depending if you if depending on what religion you are, I mean not religion, what race you are, um, that does happen. I mean, we know for a fact in China, that you know. Well, that's a little different though. It, it's not months. that's based on because of the country, because of the uh, one right. child law. But no, and some and and, and even in and some other countries, there's just a you know, um, there's a bias towards male children. <laughs> And uh, so it should, you know, um, I think it's a fair law. You know, I don't think it's unduly burdening anybody. I'm not sure how they're going to enforce it. Right. No, I, I don't think that it's, I mean, looking at it and, and the way that they're, they're, they don't have to require asking this, that, you know, I mean, really, unless a woman comes in and says, you know, get this um it is unless she explicitly says something without somebody asking her i mean that's that's the only reason and then somebody would actually have to find out about it and that i i really think this is a stepping stone law once that's accepted then you take it the next step so 
Um, but then again, we have all sorts of inconsistent laws when it comes to the whole abortion issue, you know, where you have somebody that um, is, uh, oh, like a, a, a car accident because the uh, one person was driving drunk. He hits a pregnant woman. He's charged with two counts of manslaughter instead of just one or two counts of reckless endangerment of human life. All right. Instead of just one. Well, so it's, it, you know, you're, it's reckless endangerment of human life if it's accidental. But if it's deliberate, then it's okay. You know, because at that point, the, um, you know, that you're defining that child as, and, and we've talked about there's legally between human and person. Um, but, you know, in that case, that child is being treated as a person. Um, well, the key thing there is that it's all about choice. It's all about really, you know, um, choice. That, you know, Roe v. Wade, women have the absolute choice to make. You can argue that in a car wreck, this person, the, the child died, and it was no choice by the mother. But, you know, otherwise you can go in and have a choice. I agree with you. It's, it doesn't make sense. But, hey, that's the way the law is set up. Mm -hmm. uh, be interested in anybody else's comments out there. Please send us your comments at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Yep. Yeah, love the feedback. Oh, we got a bunch. Um... Music Man. Go ahead. I have to bring it up. I don't have it with me. I just remembered his name. <laughs> Guy says we're absolutely hilarious, and he was uh, going to subscribe. Obviously, I don't know what that says about the guy. That's, that's, mm. <laughs> I don't know. Did he click on the wrong thing? I don't know. <laughs> uh, shoot, I had it here. I apologize. Um, I thought we had a couple more. And now I can't find him. Ah, a chain letter. Ah, I touched it. I touched it. Ah! 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 Okay. Oh, wow. Let's see. Uh, okay. Um, one guy, Jesus Real TV, gave us a, a, a link saying that Richard Dawkins confessed God's existence. I didn't follow uh, that. I figured it was spam. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, I didn't follow that one either. So, um, okay, that's a. Uh, Spam. Uh, music Man, yeah. The music Man uh, 53, uh, 53100 is this thing. And he's the one who says, uh, um, And a fingly Christmas to you, too. Oh, what oh for think indeed. Uh, from your our podcast, Sleeping Through the Sermon. You guys are hilarious and make great points. Totally subbing. So thank you, Music Man. Uh, 53,100. Uh, then he wrote back to us again. Here's a wild from um, CrossFeed number 193. There's an app for that. Here's a wild ideal. Maybe Jesus doesn't have a nationality. Perhaps he looks like whatever we imagine him to look like. People forget, for, forget that God and Jesus are all powerful, meaning they can do whatever and be whatever they want or need to be. Uh, yes, that's true to an extent. However, Jesus, when he was made uh, human was a particular human. He was a male man who lived in who lived in Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, he lived in Galilee. He lived in Jerusalem. He lived in Bethlehem. He was born of a Israeli mother from the tribe of uh, Judah, the line of David. Therefore, he would have to have a nationality. Right. But now, in artwork, having and, said that, the other key thing is the fact that uh, the Bible does not give any physical descriptions of him, so that we can. I and I think the reason is because Jesus is the image of God, so that we can put our own nationality there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have no problem with you know like the nativity scenes where Jesus is shown as Asian or black or whatever, um, because to the message being he came for us, he came for all of us, you know. Right. So. Okay, and our last one, uh, less animated, we had the discussion on the uh, prayer flyers going out. And he said, the school issuing the flyers which say, pray for our school and students to pass, crosses the line on separation of church and state. 
If a student wants to pray by himself and his parents want to get in on it, that's fine. But a school shouldn't unless it's a religious school. Um, and I think, you know, the way I looked at it, uh, Music Man, was that um, it was an invitation. We invite you to do this. Nobody was required, requiring anybody to do anything. Nobody's re- coercing anybody to do anything. There was not going to be any attendance taken. Yeah. Uh, so since it was just more of an open invitation, and it was kind of made clear that you know no no student had to be there, and obviously not because the majority of students didn't show up. Only you know less than five percent were actually there. Um, then you know um, I didn't think it was really a church state issue. I thought it was not wise. You know I didn't think it was a good idea to 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 to, to make it and to say that, but I didn't think it was um, crossed the line necessarily. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't see it that way, so that's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's it's definitely a gray area. There's no question about that. So, but we really appreciate the feedback, though. Yes, we do. So, and so anybody else wants to comment, whether, you know, you can email us, podcast at crossfeednews.com, or uh, you do like Music Man did and uh, leave a comment on YouTube or one of the other video sharing sites where you're watching this. Um, but I, I should probably mention the, for a couple months now, the Crossfeed site, uh, only about like the main page uh, has been functional and you can't even click through to, um, to, to get more information and, and on the stories and stuff like that. Uh, there's a bug somewhere in it. I'm basically going to have to rebuild it from scratch um, to fix it. And uh, I just don't have time right now. Uh, I've just got too many other things going on. So um, so if you're, if you're uh, trying to, to follow stories, you know, get more information on anything, uh, I apologize for that. Uh, this just, you know, at this point, uh, Google is your friend. We've been pulling the stories. I'll, I'll give you my source. The stories we've been using for the past few weeks have been from, um, uh, RNS, uh, dot com, I think, religion news service. Um, they've got a, a blog and where they've got lots of links to all the major stories for the week. And I've just been pulling them off of there. Um, understand the crossfeed site was always more about the podcast than anything else. And, um, and it was really just a sort of a means to an end, the end being the, um, doing the podcast. And, and so, um, you're going to have to rebuild it. It's probably gonna be different than it used to be, uh, <clears throat> so that we can, uh, still continue to do the podcast, um, and draw people to the site so they can find out about the podcast. Um, but it's probably going to be structured differently. And so I, I figure all that out, but right now I'm, I'm really busy with some family stuff and, um, and church stuff. And, um, yeah, I, those things have to take priority. This is a hobby. So, uh, but we'll get to it eventually. Hopefully this summer things will calm down a little bit around here and, um, or I'll be busy with other things, but I should be able to find a, you know, a day somewhere to, to work on it. So thanks for your patience on that. That's all I have for tonight. So to everyone, a very blessed week and um, and I uh, <laughs> I'm so out of it. <laughs> He's out of it, folks. Mm. Hey, God bless. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. All right. Good night, everybody. God bless.